Well, welcome back. Today I got a 2000 Ford Focus. The owner brought it over and uh, said at highway speed, you know, slight tip into the throttle, got a little bit of a stumble. Uh, it's indicative of an ignition misfire. No codes, not, not enough to cause a code, uh, but sounds like ignition. We're going to go through and uh, figure out what's causing that problem and fix it. Oh, no. Ah. That's how. Push the clip in. Wow, get the oil in that thing. Ooh. Why do I have oil all over that? Interesting. Well, that's pretty interesting. It's coated. I don't know if this coil is bad. I can't think of why there'd be oil all over this unless the coil is bad. I don't see any on the outside. This must be from with internal to the coil. thing I can think of. Let me see if I can just light this out of here. That's interesting. The bad misfire. Got it's gotten worse. When they initially brought this over, it said you had a little stumble at highway speed. I drove it, couldn't get it to do anything, couldn't get it to stumble or anything. It was fine. And today I actually drove it a little more and did a test drive with it and I checked the plugs, just pulled the plugs out, looked at them. They do need to be replaced, I mean, and these wires could be replaced, but uh, I'm not, not to the point where I think it would uh, do what it's doing, so. And I was able to get it when I was test driving it, it turned the ignition, tur turn the ignition, uh, turn the engine light on with a 304 cylinder number 4 misfire. Uh, this leads me to believe that the coil's bad. When I see uh, oil inside this connector, and I can't think of any other reason inside a weather pack connector, that's got to be coming out of the coil, uh, inter from the internal of the coil. We're just going to do some resistance tests on this. I'm going to do a little more digging, but I'm guessing that coil's bad. I, I can't, I'm just trying to think of where else would that oil come from. It's got to be coming internally from the coil. Okay, I'm going to do a uh, resistance measurement ohms on the, from center terminal to each of the side terminals. Uh, I know you can't see it, but I'm just touching the center and one of the sides. See what I get here, get a good connection. 1.1 1 .1 ohms, which is, should be around 1 ohm, something right in there, so that looks good. The other side, get a good connection here, 1.1 1 .1 ohms, so that initial resistance looks good. Uh, let me see if I can see. Should be one and four. And one and four are on the back. Uh, you can't see this, but there's not there's numbered in the middle here. One and four are the back two here. Two and three are here. So I'm going to go across those two terminals. Ten kilo ohms. Ten point two kilo ohms. So, you have two sets that are fired together. One and four cylinders are on one coil. Uh, two and three are on another. They're fired separate. That's why you have two separate, you know, three pins. One is power. Two is the uh, firing the, the signal uh, from the computer. Uh, so, if you run an ohm meter from one terminal to the next, and these back two, it's one and four, you should get 10, 12 kilo ohms. I did this on both sets, two and three, one and four. And got 10.2 kilo ohms. So statically, the resistance is correct in this. I don't believe that it's any good, uh, considering the oil that I saw. But uh, it just kind of shows you that just doing a static resistance doesn't necessarily mean it's good. If it's open and you don't get any uh, ohm reading, yeah, then you got to definitely you have a problem. You have an open. Uh, but just because the resistance is correct doesn't mean the coil is good. difference though. I would have thought I've got the pulse on them, but I didn't. But you can definitely hear the difference here. Alright, so they're all working. You can see the difference when I pull that injector lead off of each cylinder. Okay, 
Okay, let me uh, do one other thing too. Got my multimeter. Selling ohms. I'm gonna go across the two terminals of the injector. I don't expect to see a problem here. Well, you could still see it. Uh, injector starting to go bad. Let me see what I got. Now oh, come on, give me a 15.2. 15 ohms. That's about what I would expect for these injectors. Fifteen point five. So these these are all good. These these injectors, the windings are good. Uh, no resistance issue there. I want to do one one last test before I call this coil. I'm pretty sure it's coil. It's bad, uh, but I wanted to make sure fuel pressure was okay. Tested the injectors. Uh, they're definitely firing and uh, feeding fuel. So I'm gonna actually put this in gear, hold my foot on the brake, and get it to misfire and watch the fuel pressure to see if my fuel pressure drops. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's missing right now. And it's, the fuel pressure is good. It's not dropping my fuel pressure off. Holding it steady. It's missing. Fuel pressure is good. So it's not a fuel pressure issue. I wanted to check that to make sure that we didn't have a misfire because of fuel. I didn't believe we did, but now I'm... Uh, pretty confident we can call it the coils bad on this from what we've seen. We're going to pull this coil. It's going to be, I, well, I won't be able to see either. Just disconnect the electrical connector. I'm just going to undo the plug wires. Just set them out of the way so they're not in my way. And it's hot right now, so I may need to get a glove for this. Rather than burn my hand, but we'll see. So I got the coil out, um, you can see, cylinder marks 1432, these are on one coil, these are on the other, uh, but you can look down in that connector and hopefully you can see that uh, there's oil in there, uh, and that's why I believe this is bad, and then when I got it off there and look, you can see the cracks in this, in the, in the bottom of it, yeah, this is most likely from heat, and this is, you know, 99.9%, .9%. yeah, this is what's bad, see cracks like that, oil, so I get the part, I'll have it tomorrow and we'll put it back together, should fix the problem. There's the part number for the replacement FD497. We're just going to put the coil back on, four bolts, hook everything back up and see how we did. I'm not actually going to show you, there's not much to say, I'm just going to bolt it back on just like I took it off. And then we'll come back when I'm done. Alright, everything's back together. The coil's on, plugs are back on. Just gotta take it out for a test drive. See how it does. I'll take the car out, test drove it, under load, uh, you know, had it uh, in gear with my foot on the brake, giving it gas, make, you know, loading the engine up. No misfire at all, runs really well, no problems. This is one of those test don't guess videos. Um, Could have just changed the coil as soon as I saw that I had oil within that connector. Uh, but there are other things that are contributing. You're talking about a car that has 140,000 miles on it. Change the plugs in it because the plugs needed to be changed. So they're going to have a little some effect. Um, check the wires. Check the injectors. Check the fuel pressure. Uh, what I don't want to do is replace the coil. And in this case, the coil is obviously bad. And then find out there's something else after talking uh, to the owner of the car. I want to find out everything I can about that might be causing this issue. If you have to do this, I hope it helps you out. If you liked the video, subscribe below. Thanks for watching.